There has been a lot of discussions whether Raspberry Pi is comparable to a classic PC and whether it is a PC at all. Yes, my answer is yes, it is a PC and uh, it is comparable and uh, with Raspberry Pi 5 at least it's fast enough to be compared to some older uh, classic PCs but uh, you can do much more with it. What is important here is that all the usual functionalities that we use with a PC are available. So if you want to browse the internet, it's perfect. You can browse the internet, you can use Wi-Fi uh, connection to get to the internet or you can use Ethernet connection. They're both fast enough. It's, it's great. You can write text. Uh, you have LibreOffice that you can install on uh, your Raspberry Pi uh, 5 uh, uh, operating system, on your Raspberry Pi operating system and it works uh, very well. So if you want to program it, uh, you can program it in a uh, Arduino development environment. It's just the same environment uh, as you can use in any PC. So if you use classic PC, it's the same. Uh, my feeling is that uh, it is actually a little bit faster on Raspberry Pi. It opens a little bit faster. It's, it can compile the code quickly and everything. So you can develop your uh, Arduino projects with uh, Raspberry Pi. And of course, uh, what else can you do if you want a graphical uh, development environment for Windows applications? I'm not talking about Microsoft Windows. For those, you can use, uh, for example, Microsoft Visual Studio, but uh, I'm talking about Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, you can use, for instance, MonoDevelop. This is uh, similar, okay, more simple than Microsoft development environments, but still, it works on Raspberry Pi OS. But okay, if you are not um, satisfied, satisfied uh, you can also uh, install Windows 11. But uh, there is uh, a, a little bit of a problem because uh, you can only install it on uh, Raspberry Pi 4 or Raspberry Pi 3. But uh, we are still writing support for Raspberry Pi 5. But this is not decisive because Raspberry Pi 5 is actually not made for Windows. It's made for Raspberry Pi OS or Ubuntu uh, Linux, so uh, you can use it with this. Um, it's uh, also a very good computer if you want to watch uh, videos, if you want uh, to watch uh, an internet TV, uh, if you want to listen to internet radio stations. It's all very good computer. And uh, it's even better than a classic PC if you want to hack other computers, for instance, uh, Wi-Fi networks and so on. Uh, you have plenty of videos on the internet how you can do it with the Raspberry Pi 5. And in this case, it is better. And it is also quite open architecture. It is um, actually a very good tool for hardware developers uh, because you have this 40-pin uh, expansion port and you have many hardware supported protocols available to communicate to your hardware. So for instance, you have serial port. So if you are developing an Arduino product, uh, project then that needs uh, actually uploading, uh, usually a serial port is used and here you have a serial port. You don't need any interface like on a classic PC that uh, you need a USB interface to serial. Here you don't have, you don't need it actually. And uh, the other protocol is SPI protocol. Uh, also two-way serial protocol, uh, very fast. Uh, you also have it at your disposal here on this expansion port. And also uh, I2C uh, protocol also available. So th there are quite a lot of options and uh, Raspberry Pi 5 actually um, is um, actually has uh, two systems uh, inbuilt together. So first uh, you have this system on chip 2712 that communicates to RP1 microcontroller. Uh, RP1 microcontroller is similar to RP2040 uh, microcontroller. Uh, 
uh, that has an open architecture and it's actually meant for hardware developers. It's very close to a simple Raspberry Pi, but you can use it as a chip to inbuild it into your own circuit. But okay, Raspberry Pi 5 has this one actually to be used to communicate to slower devices like uh, USB ports uh, and uh, all the other ways of communication that I've mentioned. So, uh, what else can you do with your Raspberry Pi? Uh, something that uh, you cannot connect uh, a fast uh, disk drive or uh, that you cannot uh, connect an SSD drive. But uh, the fact is that um, you can do both. You can connect them through a USB port via adapter or uh, you can connect them uh, through a PCIe port. But with this variant, uh, you need an adapter card. With Orange Pi 5, uh, you don't need such a card because the proper port is inbuilt on the bottom side of the board. These cards are not uh, available yet, uh, at least not in vast quantities, but many manufacturers are preparing uh, to make them as well, not only Raspberry Pi. So we'll see when uh, we can buy them. What about case uh, for the Raspberry Pi? Of course, you can buy an original case, but you can also make your own. Or uh, right now there, there are quite some options that are very interesting to me. These are actually aluminum cases that need no moving parts. They have no ventilator because aluminum casing acts as a very large passive cooler. And uh, this is um, quite a good option because if you want to watch videos and listen to the music, you don't want to listen to a noisy ventilator. I know that you would say, okay, I don't care, um, I, I don't have, need a, a ventilator, whatever. But uh, the fact is that when ventilator starts, when uh, Raspberry 5 uh, hits above 60 degrees Celsius, then actually uh, if some dust gets into its bearings and so on, it can get quite noisy in a few years. And uh, if you want to still use your Raspberry Pi after that time, it uh, might not be such a good idea uh, to have, um, yeah, to have this um, ventilator uh, on. It's much better to have a passive cooling because it's silent, it's totally silent. And there are quite a lot of options to use uh, passive cooling. So, uh, is Raspberry Pi a PC? Yes, it's small, but still a PC, and it still can do many things. Uh, for instance, uh, you can also record sound with uh, a very good uh, programming uh, tool, uh, and uh, Audacity, it's, it's, really, it's really a good tool. And it seems to me at least that it, it works quite well on a Raspberry Pi 5 and that it may work, uh, it may actually need much more power to work sufficiently on a classic PC. I don't know why is that, but okay, it may be because uh, many of these free software tools were developed actually at first in Linux environment. And only then they were actually ported to Intel or AMD PCs. So this, this is, this is uh, quite uh, an interesting thing uh, to see all these products. And of course, uh, you have to be prepared uh, also to buy an application nowadays, even for a Raspberry Pi 5, because um, software makers have actually discovered that they can also make some money on Raspberry Pi as well. So there are not all free applications for Raspberry Pi 5. They are also the ones that you have to pay for. And uh, the price is comparable to, to a price that you pay for a classic PC. There are, for instance, um, applications uh, to make your own music it's electronic music and uh, you have to pay for them. You can use free versions like on a classic PC, but okay, this is, this is interesting. But uh, still, 
Office is for free. LibreOffice is for free. And if you use Microsoft Office, you have to pay it one way or another. Either you pay more for a new computer or you buy it separately. You still have to pay it. But here with Raspberry Pi 5 or any kind of Raspberry Pi, you don't have to buy it. So that's it for today. Um, if you've managed to listen this uh, uh, talk to the end, um, we're going to continue next time. And uh, if you liked it, uh, press like and subscribe button and uh, the next video is coming soon. Bye.